Fighting laziness is something that is really, really important. If you look at the youth, a lot of what is destroying the youth is laziness. Look at the boys, the girls, even those who are slightly older, laziness. And then you expect to achieve, you expect to succeed and you haven't contributed to yourself. How are you going to contribute to society, to community, to the country, to the nation, to the ummah, to humanity at large, when you haven't even refined or corrected yourself in terms of laziness? You're so lazy. People dream of things, dream of things and they keep on dreaming. Subhanallah. That's why sometimes you see the young boys, you know, and I've seen it happening. He's sitting in one corner and suddenly he's smiling. <laughs> then he's laughing and he's smiling again. I say, what's happening? Say, mm, I'm just dreaming of something big. Well, in order to achieve the dream, get up and start doing something about it. It's not going to come to you where you're sitting. It, you, it's good to dream big and it's good to have dreams indeed. But you need to now get up from your sleep and, and start fulfilling the dream. That's when Allah will help you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So if we realize and understand that in, in life, we are going to need to keep working hard, get up in the morning, come back in the evening, Tired, having achieved something and thank Allah one day was spent. I scored 10 goals today. Okay, the uh, shaitan might have scored one or two goals at night. You make sure you repent. In fact, don't even wait for the night. You repent to Allah. You seek Allah's forgiveness. You ask him, oh Allah, I am your slave. You know, I am weak. I am human. I did not sin and transgress against you out of defiance. I don't defy you, O oh Allah. Halal is halal, haram is haram. I know, but O oh Allah, it's my weakness. My human nature has made me sin, not defiance. I don't defy. You are my creator, my maker. I worship you alone. And I'm not going to defy you, O oh Allah. It's my weakness. Allah will forgive you. Subhanallah. Allah will forgive you. He wipes it out. What did you do to your book? You've written a nice chapter. You've deleted the bad, completely gone, totally gone. Subhanallah. Now we come to reaching out to others. Now that I have actually helped myself, I've developed, I've only spoken about one aspect, maybe a few others when it came to gossiping and so on. But this aspect of fighting laziness, thereafter I need to remember. From my home, charity begins at home. Why? How is it connected to what I said? When you are judged by Allah on the day of judgment, yes, he's going to judge you with your belief in Allah, how you tried your best to worship Allah. One of the most important things is your character and conduct. Did you ever know that? Have you ever heard the hadith where the Prophet peace be upon him says, Khayrukum o khiyarukum, and then he says something? What, what has he said? What does Khayrukum mean? It means the best from amongst you. If the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who is speaking on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is telling us the best from amongst you, it means in the eyes of Allah, the best from amongst you. Uh, when Allah judges you, He's going to look also at this aspect I'm about to mention. What is it? Khairukum khairukum li ahlihi. Wow. Wow. Allah is going to judge me based on how I treated my wife. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah is going to judge me. One of the things, one of the things is based also on how I treated my wife, my husband, my family members. It was a sacrifice. This morning I was speaking to people saying, you know what? Marriage is one of the biggest sacrifices you're ever going to make. It's not a perpetual honeymoon. Subhanallah. And I'm sure those here who are married, they must be thinking, wow. You know, they say getting married is like jumping into a hot shower. Once you get into it, you realize it's not that hot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah grant us ease. It's not what you think it is. It is way beyond that. It's a sacrifice. Allah gives you opportunity upon opportunity to score goals. You're going to sacrifice for your family and they will sacrifice for you as well. Subhanallah. So my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah is going to judge you on many aspects. One of the important aspects is your character and conduct. Hence, the Prophet peace be upon him says, Khayrukum o khiyarukum ahasinukum akhlaqan. The best from amongst you are those who have the best character and conduct. Develop it. Touch people's lives. What is character and conduct connected to? It's connected to hukukul ibad. It's connected to the rights of fellow human beings. Those whom you are going to interact with. What do they get from you? Do they get a smile? If they get that, you score the goal. What else do they get? Do they get a good greeting? If they get that, it's a goal. 
Do they get a good handshake? Subhanallah. Please don't give two fingers. You know, people sometimes greet with two fingers or they greet you half-heartedly, just like this, uh, by the way. It happens a lot with the sisters as well, where you're just greeting because of... And you know what? If someone shakes my hand from among the brothers, obviously, and he gives it to me half-heartedly, it tells me that there's something wrong with this person. They, they have perhaps issues that they haven't resolved. May Allah gra grant me goodness and every one of us. You give a good, nice handshake. Make the person feel good. Make the child feel good. Make all those around you feel good. That is akhlaq. That is character. You are scoring goals. You are being productive with your time, with your energy, with your effort, with your wealth, with all those things, with your young age, with your health. You are being productive because those things are going to go. They are going to go. Subhanallah. So have you touched the lives of people? If you had, trust me, trust me. If you did this during your life in the Akhirah, it will be one of the biggest reasons that you would probably get Jannah for. Because the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were curious. They asked the messenger, peace be upon him, O messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people of Jannah, what would have gotten them to Jannah? The people of Jannah, how would they have got to Jannah? What are the characteristics? You know what he said? Two things. Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. The consciousness of Allah, developing the relationship with Allah, and the goodness of character and conduct. Amazing. Amazing. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us another thing that Allah is going to judge us by. Another thing that Allah is going to judge us by, let me mention it and then I'll go on to this little announcement. Allah is going to judge us by how much we benefited other people whom He created. Wallahi. Why? Because the Messenger says, خَيْرٌ nasi أَنفَعُهُمْ nasi." The best of people is the one or those who are the most beneficial, who've benefited the rest of the people the most. So ask yourself, how many have I benefited? How many have I benefited? Hence, when Allah gives you position, don't ever be corrupt. Corruption is something that will destroy not your dunya, but even your akhirah. Imagine Allah gave you a position of authority. Now you're pinching money. Now you're stealing. Now you're asking for bribes. Now you're doing something that you know is wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of us who are in authority. What happens? You're stealing from society, from community, from your nation. It, you might become wealthy, but your nation is suffering and struggling because you are corrupt. You are part of the problem, yet you are in authority. What have you done? How much are you going to amass? If it was wrong and you amassed a billion, do you know what? You're only going to use a million. Your kids will be killing each other for that amount. Rather, I take a little bit less and I love it when others earn. I love to see others grow. I want to see others succeed. Then you will get Jannah because those were also created by Allah just like you were. You want Jannah, be happy to see others in business. Today, if I have a big business, I don't want anyone else to do a similar business. Not at all. Never. Why? Because it's me. How much are you going to take? How much are you going to take? Allow us also to do a business. If you go to some Middle Eastern countries, you notice when you go and buy abayas, there's 50 shops all of abayas, all together. When you want to go to buy phones, they got a whole mall full of only phone shops. You want to buy? Why? Because we are supposed to believe in the in the qisma of Allah. The rizq is from Allah. The sustenance is from Allah. The distribution of wealth is from Allah. I remember in Medina Munawwara, I used to help a certain brother who used to sell some cloaks. And one day we did a deal with a certain lady. He did a deal for a certain cloak in the morning. In fact, it was later on. And then he said, look, I've done the deal, but I want you to go to that shop across there and buy it from that person. No, go and collect it from them and pay them. And he phoned the brother. He says, brother, you know what? There's been four or five customers came in here today. And as for you, I saw nobody's come into your shop. So I just sent a client. I know you've got the stock same as mine. You can sell it to them. Allahu Akbar. What was he doing? Scoring his goal, being productive, helping society. He's happy. I made my money for today. Five people walked into my shop. What about my brother? No one's walked into his shop. Let me send him two clients of ours today. No way. We will go into someone else's shop and we know we're big. We say, guys, let me tell you, I have a better product. Come, come, let's walk out. Take him out. What did you do? How greedy can you become? Where's that wealth going to go? Can I tell you? You're going to waste it on something bad. When your wealth is ill-gotten, it gets wasted just as it came. 
You don't know where your wealth went. Why? There's no barakah. Here in Nigeria, they say al barka Am I right? Wallahi. It's amazing. I've heard that term so much that I trust me. We need to know more about it. You want barakah, learn to help others. When you give, Allah will give you. When you promise that I'm going to take care of 100 orphans, Allah will give you the money because He knows if that sustenance is written for the orphans, Allah will give it to you because you are giving it to them. My beloved brothers and sisters, if you really want to become successful in your life, you need to leave laziness. You need to leave all this procrastination and you need to take action. You need to sacrifice. Without sacrifice, nothing good in life will come. If you really want to achieve something great, you really need to sacrifice and you need to work hard. You need to give your time in achieving things. You can flick the pages of history. You'll see all the successful people, all the big people, all the people who have achieved they all worked hard. They all went through hardship and difficulties. The people that went to the pinnacle of success, they all had big dreams and they all worked hard towards their dreams. No matter how many obstacles were there in front of them, no matter how many difficulties and hardships were there in front of them, they didn't give up hope. They always took action and moved ahead so from now on stop wasting your time in social media stop wasting your time arguing with others stop wasting your time in petty issues and talking all the nonsense with your friends and colleagues and stop all these never-ending get-togethers it's time you should work and you should take action you should become skillful you should read books you should enhance your knowledge you should become someone more skillful and when you do so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support you Allah will shower mercy on you Allah will open the doors of opportunities for you and finally Allah will make you successful Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.